Well, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quad Boss Lee, and today we are going to be working on the 2004 Yamaha 660 Raptor, and today we're going to be installing a fun modification to it. In a sense, we are basically installing an instrument cluster on a quad, you could basically say. It is a vapor trail system. It's gonna give us a lot of different options. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, we have our vapor trail display right here. It is battery powered by a watch, but we're going to hardwire it to the quad itself. But as you can tell, there are plenty of displays on here. It's got a mode, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got an ambient temperature up top, miles per hour, distance, time. It's also got a tachometer and a water temp on it. Here's all of everything that is included. We have our mounts. We have a stock size bar mount or oversized bar mount. We have our basically our RPM sensor wire, which I'll show you how we install that in a minute. Our water temperature, which taps into our coolant lines. We have our one of the wheel speed brackets. This will be a brake caliper or a wheel. This one is our wire speed. These wires are our power wires. So Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started and move over to the handlebars to make our mount fittable. All right, guys, so we are here on the display of the Raptor, and this is where we're going to mount our system at. Now, a few things we're gonna to have to do is, we're gonna to have to figure out how we're gonna put these lights in the ignition somewhere else close, because this plastic piece we're no longer gonna have anymore. So that'll be towards the end of the video. I'm not concerned right now. We're gonna have to make some sort of plate that maybe goes up top or somewhere down below. But to get this off, just pull it straight up. Comes right off. And here's our handlebars. So our handlebars are stock handlebars. So we're gonna use the stock mount. Now you can mount either side. It doesn't matter. It is up to you wherever you want it. If you want it higher up, you can have it up here. If you want it mid center we can keep it down there so i'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped around our bars here and figure out where i want it and then i will continue on Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen so i got it mounted up on the handlebars i've got i had to put a little bit of tape on here because for some reason the standard bar did not fit as tightly as it should but it's mounted on there it's not going anywhere so we're going to mount our ignition wire first and on these raptors the spark plug if you go right on the driver's side, right behind the headlight here, you'll see this wire here. You'll see your coil right here. This wire is going to run to your spark plug, which is right here. So we're going to go ahead and pop that out, and I'm going to show you how we're going to wrap this wire around. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So here's your ignition coil. It is right below the driver's side headlight. And as you can tell, the red wire is going to be our, it's the RPM wire. And the easiest and most uh, accurate way of getting your RPM is taking this red rod and wrapping it around your spark plug wire five times and then tying it off. So I did that and I started the bike and it works. So I'm gonna move on to the next wire which is gonna be our constant 12 volt wire which conveniently when you take the seat off you can run the wire basically along the side of the gas tank all the way down right here to your battery so i'm gonna go ahead and run that down we'll get that hooked up and this should light up our display for us Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen it's time for the wheel sensor we are on the passenger side we took the passenger side wheel off it is four 14 millimeter bolts once you get it off you will see this exact picture first step we're going to do is we're going to take our little gasket off next you're going to take a 22 millimeter socket and loosen up your hub nut once you get that loosened up and off you're going to loosen up the brake caliper bolts there are two one up top here one on the bottom right below here they are 12 millimeter bolts once you get those out get this last one unscrewed once you get that out you're good to slide your brake caliper out Put that up there once you get that off you're able to take your rotor off slides right out now with your wheel sensor there is a magnetic bolt or magnet we are going to be using the magnetic bolt you'll see there are four hex heads on the 
rotor. You're going to take one of them off and you're going to put that magnetic bolt in here. And then we're going to slide that back on. Once we go ahead and put our bracket on here, this bracket is made for quads and ATVs. You will see that we have a basically a dust cover for our wheel. You want to take this top one out and this bottom one out. This bracket is going to fit right in those holes. We're going to put it on the back side. And then this hole right here is where our wheel speed sensor is going to go. So it's going to be a 3 8 hole. We're going to drill it right where this kind of mark is made on the dust cover. And we'll go ahead and fasten it together. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, just like that, our uh, rim guard is back on with our sensor in there. And now we take our rotor and stuff and put it back on. I know it's very hard to see, but you'll see when I rotate our bolt, see how it matches right there? It goes right by it and you want just a barely enough room and it spins freely without hitting it. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this back up and we're going to go ahead and plug in our wire before we torque everything down and make sure we're getting a wheel speed. Alrighty ladies and gentlemen, so we've got our wheel speed sensor in and I got everything torqued down. Once you uh, put your basically your rotor back on, your hub nut, which is a 22 millimeter, you're going to torque this down to 52 foot pounds. So once this is torqued down, you'll be free to put your brake caliper back on and your two bolts, your top and your bottom, you're going to torque to 21 foot pounds. And then once we get all this settled in, we're good to put the tire back on and your tire lug nuts are going to be 33 foot pounds. So I go ahead and put the tire on and that'll complete the wheel speed sensor. And that leaves the last sensor, which is going to be our water sensor. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and start draining the coolant, which I will show you in just a second. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So we're moving on to the last sensor, which is the water temperature sensor and the sensor actually taps into your coolant lines. We're gonna have to obviously disconnect our, one of our coolant lines. So I want the one that comes from the engine so I can get the hottest one I can. And it looks like it's gonna be this top hose right here, but we're going to do a coolant flush at the same time because I don't know what coolant's in here and I'd rather just add it all at the same time. So if you come down here on the right side of the engine, you'll see your water pump, which is right down here. You will see there's a little bolt right here. That's the drain plug. So it is an eight millimeter. We're gonna loosen that, have a pan down here ready. And we're gonna let this coolant drain. Once I loosen this up to speed up the process, if you take your front guard off, your radiator guard, it's just two little bolts up top here. You will see on the top here is your radiator cap. Once we disconnect the drain plug to make it a little faster, we can loosen this to allow airflow out. We're gonna go ahead and get this draining. And uh, once it's done draining, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make our connection. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so we're on the passenger side on the top of the crankcase here. And you will see our coolant line. This is the hot side. And you will see there's a clamp here. You're gonna take a quarter inch socket and you're gonna loosen this up to where you're able to move uh, you know the clamp and then we should be able to wiggle this off and you might get some coolant coming out of there uh, if you do just have your drain pan down there like I do now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap into this hose and before I cut it I wanted to make sure that this fitting fits correctly and it does I'm good to go ahead and cut it I'm gonna probably gonna cut it somewhere around in the middle here to where I can have it in the middle to where we can still have enough to go on this end. So I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts, tighten down, and then I'll show you afterwards. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so I've made our connections. And as you can tell, really flows in with the bike. I'm going to wrap the wire, tuck it behind the gas tank. But once you get that, you're going to put back in your water pump drain plug. You're going to take that 8mm and you're going to torque it down to 88 inch pounds. Once you torque that down, you are good to go to start refilling this up. When you refill this up, you're gonna to wanna to fill it right at the bottom of your radiator cap. You're gonna run the bike for about a minute. Once you run it for a minute, let it cool down for about a minute, take the radiator cap off, tap it off. Once you got it topped off and you got your reserve tank back here filled up to the full line, 
the bike is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck our wires back with our tachometer wheel sensor, tuck them all the way, and then uh, should be good to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we took it out for a quick ride. We got all of our wires tucked up, your speed wires tucked up underneath there, 12 volts running perfect, our temperature gauge tied up underneath there. Took it for a ride, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see the display that well here, but you can see right now, you'll see there's a red light on. That's because I set the warning light for the water temperature. If it hits above 190, which you can see right there, we're at 197, this light will come on. So, but we did take it for a ride. There's our highest settings. We went 53 miles an hour. Distance, we went 2.2 miles per hour. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We installed that. It took two days, um, but you know I just want to take my time to get everything right. But the temperature, tachometer, odometer, and the wheel spencer works all perfectly fine. I'm going to see what the operating temp of these Raptors are to make sure I'm in the right range because um, it did creep up pretty quickly, but it is hot in Arizona. So we'll see what happens. But the ambient temperature works as well. So guys, I love this thing. Um, if you guys like this video, please give this video a like. If you have not already, subscribe to Quad Boss Elite for our next video coming out soon. 